Hi, Howard. Hi, Jim. What have you got for us here? A collection of originals from Walt Disney's 1940 film Pinocchio. I want that. Howard Lowry owns the Lowry Animation Gallery in Burbank, California. This is where the film starts, where it goes into production. When artists and writers are developing the storyline, developing the characters, the dialogue, and the look of the film. How did animation get started? I mean, who first got the idea of animating still drawings? For the birth of animation, we have to go back to the silent days, back to the turn of the century. Windsor McKay was a famous comic strip artist, created Little Nemo in Slumberland, and he took on the challenge of also making animated films. His first one was in 1909, using the Little Nemo characters. In 1911, he created a longer film entitled Dirty the Dinosaur. The drawings were done on rice paper. A master background was created, and it was traced on each drawing. The character of Gertie was different in each drawing, because Gertie was what moved the background and stayed stationary. You can see why Gertie would have brought the house down. Then along came this guy named Walt, who came up with this fellow named Mickey, and, well, you know the rest. By 1931, he had made the film Beach Picnic. This gives us a very visual demonstration of how these films were developed. This scene here is from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It shows Grumpy. We can see how delicately and how beautifully the artist changed Grumpy from a fussy old guy into someone who realized he'd just been kissed by a very pretty girl. And this is really where the character's personality or uh, emotional state is created. Absolutely. Now, Howard, you told us that uh, the animation drawings are where the characters are brought to life and move, but that's not how they look when we see them on the screen. The animation drawings have to make the transition into cell paintings. These are paintings of the characters that are traced from the animation drawings. The color is added, and they're what actually go onto the camera, and they're what you see on screen. I saw Lady in the Tramp probably 15 times with Simon Spaghetti when the Italian guy was playing the violin for Lady in the Tramp, and he was nudging the meatball over to her, and they each got a piece of spaghetti, and they ate it until they kissed, and she looked away. And, oh, I remember all that. Okay, okay, we get the picture. Now let's get the background on some of these characters. We have the background painting shown in its entirety. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to cover up portions of it as we add characters to it, as we add the animated characters. Right. The first one is Aurora herself. She's here singing to her animal friends who come on the second layer of cells. All right. Every Disney princess gets along well with the animals. Here we have the foreground images the trees in the foreground, the leaves, and these are painted on top. That gives the sense that we're sort of peering in through a break in the underbrush. And this is a completed scene as we will see it in Sleeping Beauty. Cells like these were created to last only about two weeks, just long enough to get from the ink and paint stage to the camera. So those that have made it into the hands of collectors can be pretty rare. As your knowledge of animation goes, it's like peeling back layers. You peel back the animation cell and you discover that there was an animation drawing created before the cell came into being. Before the animation drawings, you discover there were story drawings, preliminary backgrounds, character studies, all kinds of originals that can be just as interesting as the cells and backgrounds. 